Next up will be Jim Vitek. Uh, before launching into this particular stage of his life, Jim was the uh, VP of e-commerce development for Domino's Pizza. Did you make real pizzas or virtual pizzas? <laughs> Don't answer that question. It's okay. uh, I sold a lot of pizza. <laughs> okay. um, Jim built a team and technology behind Domino's.com and the Pizza Tracker. Uh, a little bit about the company AppKeep she's going to talk about is the first to combine hyper-local potential of home screen advertising with the user incentive of free apps content. About 500 million Android users, now let him tell you about all the rest of it. So take it away. Great, thank you. Uh, so it's a great introduction. I'll, I'll get right into it here. Yeah. Um, so, every good business needs a problem that it solves. So Android developers, as we mentioned, there are 500 million Android devices on this planet. There are 1.3 million shipping every day. It's, it's a huge market. Apps are a big part of why these phones are so popular, but the app developers who create these apps aren't making much money. So why is that? There's a lot of reasons. One is everybody knows you download the free version of the app, and then how many download the 99 cent version? I mean, it's only a buck. All right? But only about 1% of the users that download the free version download the paid version. And multiple reasons for that besides just being cheap. Payment setup is optional. Some people don't have a credit card that file that raises the, raise the bar a little bit. Piracy is rampant on Android. Google started the company clamping down on that. And one of the other big problems is if you can't sell it, you can throw ads in it, right? But the ads kind of suck. All right? And so why do, why do they suck? Um, so if you look at ads in apps today, um, you know, they're, they're in the app. So this is a screenshot off of my phone. You can see I actually shot the bird through the ad. <laughs> they stick it in an annoying spot. Here's the free uh, app and, and you know, it's got the ad at the bottom of it. But think about where, what is the user doing when they actually see this app? And where are they? Okay? Many times you're at home or you're waiting, or you're getting ready to go to sleep, or you're in the bathroom, or something like that. So a lot of these ads that are in apps are poorly timed and targeted, and that means poor ROI for the advertisers. And because of that, a lot of the ads that you see in apps are actually for other apps, okay? Most ads are for other apps, not real stuff. And the ads for real stuff are, in many cases, just virtual goods that don't have a whole lot of real world value. So if the advertisers get poor ROI out of it, the developers aren't going to make very much. So how do we fix this? Well, Android offers a unique opportunity. So Android has a home screen that you traverse whenever you do different things on, on the phone. So when you send a text, make a call, use the internet, you know, an email, or even use an app, every time you do that, you go through this home screen. It's very frequently seen, kind of like a home page in a browser. And so if you were to go through and enable advertising on this screen, you could fix mobile advertising. And so that's the app key concept. If we move advertising on an opt-in basis to the home screen, it could be more effective. This is a real ad I saw on State Street for Lamarzo, which is a restaurant right there. And as we can see, it's, it's 0.1 blocks away. I actually just looked at my phone a few moments ago. There's an ad on here for Foxtown Grill, three blocks away. It just automatically shows up. I don't even know where it is, but I can save money there. And so, uh, and so, why would people opt into this? Well, apps are the incentive to opt in. Now we're going back to developers. So, if a user decides to, you know, try the free version of app, upgrade it for 99 cents, great. Get the full premium version of the app, or the user can install AppKey and get it for free. Okay, so. The way this works is AppKey collects the money from these more effective ads, and we distribute it to developers who earn installs of AppKey in a, in a residual based on usage of their apps. We have a patent pending approach on how to go through and distribute revenue on the platform that we build. The team right now is two of us. There's actually a third, and his picture isn't up here yet, doing business development. Uh, I got a short intro, but um, so in short, I'm an MBA, I'm, I do the Android development, um, I've built things before, 
Kyle is building the platform. He worked for Amazon.com for a while. He's a very good developer. And so our status is we have a beta live in Google Play right now. Uh, we have an app live. We're working to get four more live right now, working with developers. We have agreements for ad inventory from several major sources. We found that mobile ad inventory kind of sucked, so we went out and we found companies that sell local advertising, and we use them for inventory. And so why am I here presenting? Well, if any of you have an Android phone, download AppKey. Try it, use it, send me some feedback. I'd love to hear it as a user. Also, if you are an Android developer, if you have an app or you know people who do, I'd love to talk to them because most of them aren't making much money off their apps, and I think we have a great solution. So, well, freemium kind of by definition is, is a free and a premium version. There's two different ones. But if a, if a developer only has one version of it, they can choose to use AppKey. So they could have it, triple layer is kind of a derogatory term from years past. So they could launch it and then maybe there's a, a few features in place, but if you have AppKey running, you get more robust features. Maybe that's the only way to offer. Yeah, if I install, I just installed the uh, app beta from the Play Store. And, and uh, should it auto add this widget or should I have to manually add it? Just you have to, to manually it? add it. There's, you, you have Android, you know how some apps will pop an icon on your home screen and so on. The Android security model does not allow me to programmatically put a widget on the home screen. What if it's bundled with another app? It still cannot auto install. <laughs> It can, it can, well, it can auto-install on the phone. It cannot auto-place on the home screen. Okay. Um, so you're using a beta version. I have a new version of the SDK almost launched that actually has a wizard type approach because a lot of <coughs> users don't know how to do it on the home screen. So we're going to have helpful videos. <coughs> Love your feedback on that. Yes? The amount you pay each developer for uh, app key transfer Yes. How close is that to the amount that we get from the purchase app? Well, so if it's a 99 cent app, um, the carrier, Google keeps about 5%, the carrier keeps about 25%, so the developer gets 70 cents. But then only 1% of the users are actually upgrading for that. So per download, maybe they're making 0.7 cents today. And so what we're doing is we're giving a nickel install incentive for um, or US users, and then there's the residual. So we actually take half of the gross revenue that comes in and distribute it based on the usage of those apps. Follow up to that, um, how does that apply to apps that are beyond the 99 cent? Uh, it's up to the developer. So uh, one of the developers we have in the pipeline right now has a puzzle application, and they have in-app purchases for $4.99 for extra puzzle packs. And so they're just going to create a virtual you know, package that app users will get for free. And so it may not be the full $4.99, maybe it'll be about half of that. But it's whatever the developer does, because they can it's all virtual. There's no variables there. Is it still a nickel per transfer, or is that group grow exponentially as a It's a nickel per install. And then it's residual based on the revenue that that user earns. So if, it's a, if you have a game targeted at five-year-old kids, they're probably not going to spend much of anything. You're probably not going to earn much on a residual. But if you have an app which is a stock market application, and the, uh, the person using it buys a number of things, local deals like we have here, the developers of those apps would earn a disproportionately large amount, and they would earn it. Yes? If you only get that paid version one time, you download it, and then downloaded it once, it's on my device, I got a free paid version, and now next week there's a new paid version I want. Yeah. App key, it's a one time. So what, what the developer does is we have an SDK, it's on the website, the developer downloads it, they integrate it in their app. Every time that app ever launches, it checks to see if app key is running. And so you can have the fully functional version, you delete app key, drag it to the trash, now it starts asking for money again. It's automatic. The SDK available for any app developers, or is that something they No, it, it's online right now. 
working with on a new version coming in about a week. <laughs> yes, Pat. Uh, my question is, what town are you located in? And are you affiliated with the business incubator like Spire or Tech Town? Um, I, I am in Ann Arbor. I live in uh, Ann Arbor and I actually work out of the tech brewery. Um, and the I have taken some MEDC money, thank you very much, um, in the form of a business accelerator uh, engagement for somebody who's putting together some documents for me. Thank you. Yes. Can you mention a little bit more about the, the ads that are shown? Are you running ads that from restaurants that already advertise in DuPont and Yelp and so on? Yes. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually working with Yelp and working with Groupon. Um, and they end up paying me if I drive a sale their way. Okay? So for instance, this, this ad that I just saw uh, for Foxtown Grill, this is $10 of value for $4. Apke earns $1.20 off of that. And it's three blocks away. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much.